Here's a wooden cased DECA tabletop 78 RPM record player that I'd guess was made probably in the either the very early 40s or made right after World War, World War II, around 46, 47. Someone I know asked me to work on this for them, get it back up going again if possible. See what we've got here. As you can see, just a single play manually operated turntable with our heavy tracking tone arm with a crystal cartridge that's surely dead by now with a straight steel needle. Here's our needle cup that has a few needles still in it. Now let's check out the underside and see what we've got. Here's our speaker that the cone is obviously shot on. I don't know whether we'll be reconing this or replacing it with another speaker. That will be determined a little later. There's the drive motor. and Here's the amplifier, although you really can't see it well. It's just a one tube amp. It uses a Type 70L7 which is a a, uh, a rectifier tube and audio output tube in the same envelope. This is one of those amplifiers that uses a 3 volt crystal cartridge to drive the output stage di directly. Now you think this is safe to plug in? I don't see any problems here, do you? Alright. Well, let's just go ahead and make the let the first order of business be cutting this old cord off and getting rid of it. And here's the amp. And looking at the style of components in this thing, I'm going to now say this was made before World War II. Although I'm, I am aware that some manufacturers, even after the war, used surplus parts that were made before the war. But I'm going by these mica mold capacitors here that I'm sure are leaky and this resistor here that's purpose is to drop the excess filament voltage we have a 70 volt tube here so we have to drop about 50 volts so that's what that's for and this is a Magnavox permanent magnet speaker I could replace this with a modern Chinese speaker but I think it would be better to to have the original speaker reconed, but I'll have to discuss that with the owner of this unit and see what he wants to do. But right now, let's concentrate on getting the amplifier up and running. But before we uh, work on the amplifier, let's see how how heavy this tone arm is tracking at. Eighty nine point. 89 grams. That's a heavy tone arm, isn't it? Which to me is totally unacceptable. Back in the day this was made, nobody really cared. If you wore the record out, you just went out and bought another one. But in today's world, a lot of the records we're finding are not easily replaceable. So what my idea is, if possible, is take this old heavy metal crystal cartridge out and replace it with a modern 78 RPM crystal, or ceramic cartridge. And even at that, the tone arm is still too heavy because the newer cartridge will track around 8 to 10 grams. So I'm going to try and devise a way to add some sort of counter spring under here to lighten the tone arm up. If I can't do that, our only other option will be to have this cartridge rebuilt. But I'd rather go with something more modern and lightweight if I can. As you might expect, these one tube amplifiers are, are fairly simple in design. In fact, they're about as simple as they come. But before I start replacing things, I want to check the audio output transformer and make sure that it's good. If it's not, that might complicate things a little more. So let's check that now. And to do that, we'll just use our ohm meter. Have it set on the 2000 ohm scale. And we'll just measure across the primary winding. 
and we have our meter connected across the primary. I'm reading 224 ohms. So far, so good. And another way you can check the audio output transformer that will confirm the condition of the primary winding, the secondary winding, and the speaker is to connect a, a battery. Normally a one and a half volt battery should be sufficient, but I have an almost dead nine volt battery here, but it has enough charge in it to do what I need to do. You just connect the battery across the primary winding of the transformer. And if everything's good, you'll hear it clicking in the speaker. So everything's good as far as the transformer and speaker voice call. Now we can proceed with the recap of the amplifier because that's about the only major component in here that would present a problem if it was bad. And here are both uh, mica-mold domino capacitors. Now a lot of people confuse these for mica capacitors, but I don't believe these are actually mica caps. I think these are paper capacitors inside of a plastic housing or a bakelite housing. Whatever, they were considered high-tech in their day, but they weren't as high-tech as they would have liked to have thought they were. Okay, there are the two new capacitors installed, and thanks to the small nature of, of modern components, I can mount them in physically different positions than the original capacitors, yet they still maintain the same electrical connection. Now that makes it easier for me to do other work that needs to be done. Now we're checking the resistors in this amp. We have three of them. The first one is the the resistor on the input side of the phono cartridge. It's supposed to be, looks like 150K, 150,000. However, we're reading, we're reading 420,000. And here's our resistor in the power supply. It's supposed to be 3,000 ohms. We're reading 4,000 ohms, so that one's out of tolerance too. And here's our cathode bypass resistor on the audio output tube. Uh, generally these are 150 ohms, although the color code is kind of faded on this one and I can't see it that well, but anything between 120 and 150 would be acceptable. Let's see what we have. We have 190 ohms. Uh, yeah, that one needs to be replaced. Well, actually measuring it on the 2,000 ohm scale on my meter, we're reading 207 ohms. So, yeah, that definitely does need to go. Oops, here's another resistor I missed. This is the surge current limiting resistor that connects between the cathode of the rectifier tube and the filter capacitor. Uh, normally, these resistors are usually under 50 ohms, usually between 22 and 33 ohms, somewhere in that neighborhood. The color code is faded on this one. I can't make it out. But at any rate, when measuring it on the meter, it reads 239 ohms. So that's, I know that's totally unacceptable. And I'm really not surprised that that resistor is out of tolerance because, you know, that's a pretty high demand area of the circuit there. So... No surprises. Now we'll analyze the capacitors. The first domino cap, extremely leaky. Second domino cap, extremely leaky. We're testing our electrolytic capacitor, section number one. Extremely leaky. You can see the eye is not opening back up at all. We're only applying maybe 60 volts to it. And section number two of the electrolytic capacitor. Also very leaky. Taking that eye, that eye is not even opening back up. So yep, our capacitors were indeed bad. Okay, we have all the defective capacitors and resistors replaced. I've replaced the power cord. We have the amp plugged in. Volume control turned up. Have my clip lead connected to the audio input. 
And as you can hear, we're passing a signal. And a pretty stout signal to be a little one tube amplifier. So as far as I'm concerned, the amplifier is repaired. Now we'll move on to the turntable. And before we move on to the turntable, let me just say another word about these mica mold caps, if I haven't already. These are a source of confusion for a lot of radio and vintage electronics repair people. In fact, they confused me at one time. I saw the brand mica mold and just assumed these were mica capacitors. Well, they're not. The mica mold is actually the name of the company that made these. And what I've learned over the years, any capacitor you find with mica mold on it, you probably need to replace it, whether it be a paper capacitor or a mica capacitor. You know, these were supposed to be cutting-edge technology, hot stuff, back whenever they were first introduced. But like the bumblebee caps of the 40s and 50s, they weren't as exactly as hot as they thought they would be. Oh, well, they're, they would be hot stuff, all right, all right, if you were to apply power to a, an item with these leaky things still in it. In fact, some stuff might get hot that you don't want to get hot. So best just to go ahead and replace them. Okay, I have an AC power cord connected directly to the motor. Let's flip it on and see what happens. Well, it runs, so that means the motor is good, but uh, I can tell that the drive wheel is hard and has a notch in it, the bump, 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 bump sound you hear. And uh, obviously the mechanism will need to be taken apart and cleaned and lubricated, but that shouldn't be a big deal, which we'll get to that in the next video. We're about out of time for this one, so uh, we have the amp going. Now time to move on to the rest of it. So thanks for watching and more to come later. And I have the cartridge connected to the amp, and as you might expect, it's dead as a doornail. If that cartridge was alive and well, I would be hearing a scratching sound in the speaker, and that's not the case, so really no surprise there. Okay, there you go. Thanks for watching, and we'll get to the drive mechanism in part two.